Hello and welcome to the Helping Hand TV show with me, the voice of ability and for persons with disability. Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The Helping Hand is an initiative of the H4P organization where we seek to throw the spotlight on the abilities of persons with disability. The greatest limitations we put on ourselves become the greatest limitations of our lives. If we don't limit ourselves, we can do anything we can be anything. I see that there are more abilities lying behind yeah. my disability. Yeah. <laughs> and like I see, disability indeed is not inability. Today on the Helping Hand TV show, you are sighted, now you've lost your sight. It motivated you to do more. The question is, how come? As an athlete, you know, you don't give up until you cross the line. My goodness. My goodness. <laughs> Hello and welcome to another exciting edition of the Helping Hand TV show. The Helping Hand, as you know, is an initiative of the H4P organization, the Here for Perfection organization, where we seek to throw the spotlight on the abilities of persons with disability. And like I say, you are welcome. Welcome to my world where disability is not inability. Special thanks to DV Unlimited, Company Limited, um, and Fire City Chapel, my proud, proud sponsors. Thank you so much. And of course, special thanks to you for tuning in to your favorite show on air, the Helping Hand TV show, with me, the voice of ability on air for persons with disability. I'm going to go for a quick commercial break. When I come back, I'll introduce you to my guest. Stay tuned. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. You are with me, the voice of ability on air for persons with disability. And today, I want to introduce you to someone with so much ability. Some people call her the greatest friend. Ah. Others call her the sweet companion. Ah. And others still call her the faithful worker. Ah. She is dependable, reliable, and adorable. Ah. And she's committed to lending you a helping hand anytime, anywhere. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, help me welcome DV Cleaners. Ah. DV Cleaners Alata Samuna Shower Gels. DV Cleaners Aloe Vera Shower Gels. DV Cleaners Body Lotions DV Cleaners Hair Shampoos DV Cleaners Hair Conditioners DV Cleaners Liquid Detergents DV Cleaners Hand Wash DV Cleaners Floor Cleaners DV Cleaners Toilet Cleaners DV Cleaners Cake Soaps And now introducing DV Cleaners Hand Sanitizers For bulk purchase, call us on plus 233-278-308-246 or plus 233-244-467-326 DV Cleaners, one of the top most made in Ghana products DV Cleaners, proudly Ghanaian And so remember that anytime you purchase any of the DV Cleaners range of products you are lending a helping hand to a person with disability and you are supporting H4P organization's special advocacy for persons with disability DV Cleaners Nature's finest touch The equation for success has a lot of variables and great leadership is a combination of great habits. Great leaders are great readers, so I make it a point to read great materials every day. The Chosen Generation is a must-read book if you believe in your greatness. The Chosen Generation, available on Amazon or call plus 233-550-507-077 or plus 233-550-507. 20197-9481 Get a copy of The Chosen Generation written by the Bishop Dr. Charles C. Hackman and support the H4P organization's special advocacy for persons with disability. Grab your copy now. Welcome back to the Helping Hand TV show with me, the voice of ability and for persons with disability. Goodness and mercy shall follow me 
all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Well, today we are looking at celebrating ability in disability. Um, today I am so proud and so privileged to have a guest, a man I have admired for so long, um, from afar. Um, today he's very near. Um, I have him in the studios. Um, this man, I call him the great achiever with many amazing accomplishments. Um, I'm sure you're wondering who it is. Well, my guest today is a central regional president of the Federation for Disability Organizations. Um, his name is Nana George Frimpong. Please help me welcome him to the studio. Um, Nana, you are welcome. Yeah, thank you, my lord. Thank How you, do sir. I address you, my lord bishop? Or, <laughs> yes. Uh, which do you prefer, doctor? <laughs> All of the above. All of the above. <laughs> okay, that's right. <laughs> Thank you so much. I, I'm, I'm so humbled and so honored to have you in the studios today. Thank you. Um, a man of great achievement, great accomplishments. Um, I, 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 I say to myself that you've seen it all, you've done it all, um, you've achieved it all. You are, you are the kind of people we need to celebrate in this country. You. you are the kind of people we need <laughs> to really, really take us role models. Um, I, I'm, I'm sure my, my audience, um, both in the studio and all over the world watching us right now, um, they'll be wondering, um, what really is um, the bishop talking about? Well, um, <laughs> Nana George Frimpong is my guest. Um, I'm going to start with a story, um, how he began his journey in the disability fraternity, um, then we'll move into his achievements. And believe me, you will be amazed. <laughs> <laughs> Now, now let's start from the very beginning. Um, you right. are a man who has lived in two worlds. That's right. Um, you were not born blind. No. Um, you became blind during your university days. That's right. Oh my goodness. Tell me about the story. How, how did it happen? Uh, well, <laughs> um, it's a very long, but at the same time, can be shortened. <laughs> uh, well, I, I was born... Um, to uh, Mr. Albert O'Brantin Frimpon, who was a, a manager mm. of the Shell Ghana in Takradi. Okay. And my mother was uh, Mrs. Mata Frimpon, um, otherwise known as Mata Thompson. Okay. Um, she is um, um, half Ghanaian, Cape Coast to be precise, and half Sierra Leonean. Oh, okay. So I am a, a, half, a local African half caste. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> That's a good one. So, yes. so you were born sighted? Yes, yes I was born. You sighted. attended regular schools? Sure. I started my education um, Bolgatanga St. George's Primary School. Okay. Uh, where my mother was then working, I mm. said. Uh, Which year are we talking about now? I'm talking about the 60s. Okay. I was actually born in 1958. Wow. Yes. Wow. And then um, um, from 58 to 66, before the Kwame Nkrumah coup, mm. I was in Bogatanga. Okay. So after the coup, we relocated to Cape Coast. Okay. But that was when I lost my daddy. Mm. So, you were around six years by Yes, then? yes, yes. Okay. My father died when I was only six years old. Wow. So, um, what in the local palace we call a, a mamaba. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've been uh, <laughs> born and I've been brought up by my mother. <laughs> mommy's boy. boy. Yeah, mommy's <laughs> boy. <laughs> so, I am a third, or, um, the third of five children. Okay. Um, Nana, it will be um, amazing and very superstitious that um you you have gone through your education and you are at the university and you lose your sight yes it is it's it's not easy mm. because mm. as a young boy mm. um i attended at the Sada college wow. i am a santa Claus. i can see that yes. <laughs> <laughs> and um um whilst i was in the Sada college mm. i was a very active Mm. student mm. active in the sense that apart from um, 
being academically good mm. because I won several um, history um, prizes. Okay. Was in school history and then religion. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, I was also an athlete. Wow. So wow. Um, uh, if if at this school we are coming and then there is no fire, then <laughs> it means we are in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> That was when I got the name Fire. Oh, okay. So okay. when uh, most often when you come to the disability world and mm. you call Nana George Frimpon, they ask you which of them Fire. <laughs> <laughs> I see. So it's not that because I spit Fire, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I I nice did a lot of running with the name Fire. Wow. So it has followed me everywhere. Uh, everywhere. Everywhere. But so, when you were in secondary school, were you having any problems with your uh, uh, eyes? No, pain? no, no. Nothing at all? Nothing at all. I was a gymnast. Wow. I was a cadet. I was a... I, I used to do a long distance. I was running from 400 to 5,000 meters. My goodness. Uh, but it looks like every step of the way you are achieving something yes that's right you began so early yes yes wow. i'm going to go for a commercial break when i come back i'm going to ask nana um how the journey began in the university you are still with me the voice of ability and experience with disability this is the helping hand tv show i'll be right back after this break still to come on the helping hand tv show they diagnosed it as um, retinitis pigmentoria okay it's like those days when HIV came and there were no antiretrovirals. Mm -hmm. As soon as they say you've got HIV, you know you have you signed dead. your death sentence. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back. Thank you so much. You are welcome back to the Helping Hand TV show with me, the voice of ability on air for persons with disability. I have Nana George Frimpong, yes. aka Fire. That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> This is a man who has been achieving right from day one. Um, Nana, let's yes. go to the university um, where it all began. Um, mm. Do you remember which particular day um, it, it began? You started feeling something in your eyes? In the night, I couldn't see properly. So I had to move around with a torchlight. Wow. So I went for um, the medical checkup mm. and some doctors came to the um, bishop akon memorial eye clinic okay. i went there for the checkup mm. and they diagnosed it as um, retinitis pigmentoria okay uh that That's is a pigmentation of the retina. yeah pig pigmentation of the retina okay so uh, i said no, yes sorry. Mm -hmm. so this one they can't do an operation here in ghana wow unless they take you abroad if you are not lucky to start preparing your mind psychologically because at the end of the day the site will go wow. wow well it's like those days when hiv came and there were no antiretrovirals mm -hmm. as soon as they say you've got hiv you know you have yeah, signed your death sentence <laughs> 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 so well but that would be traumatic for you yes it wasn't so uh sort of because at that time um i had um apart from um, working as a print media as mm. a journalist mm. um, i had started um publishing um, um i've changed the cape coast the people of cape coast mm. during their annual festival okay um they used to have a small pamphlet mm. as their program okay for the festival mm. Um, I went there and I discussed with them and then they, um, they accepted my proposal that um, I should turn that small pamphlet into a magazine. Wow. So I had started producing an annual journal. Oh. For, so it was known as the Ogwa Afesha Journal. Wow. It was an annual on the history and people, the culture, the religion and history of the people of Cape Coast. Amazing. 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 So, with that background, mm. I entered the University of Cape Coast. Wow. And then once, when I got to Cape Coast, I realized that my hall, mm. Atlantic Hall, mm. they also had an FM station. Mm -hmm. So it's easy to shift from print media to 
broadcasting because that one cry you don't write mm -hmm. you know people will correct your mistakes <laughs> you don't read and put pen under your sentences <laughs> you know underline your sentences mm. so i joined atlfm as one of the apania um, crew okay and um, it was then a very small university-based community station okay. two kilometer radius okay so um i became their main man mm. at atlfm running all their morning shows while, while studying as a student oh that's wow yes the site, the the site, site was going. going wow yes it was going gradually wow. uh, gradually 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 now, now, hold it there i'm going to go for a break when i come back i'll find out um here you are a vibrant young man um you are doing so much for the community but you're, you are losing your sight i would ask you how it was affecting you well, you are still with me, the voice of ability and for persons with disability. I'm going for 60 seconds success. I'll be right back with my very special guest, Faya. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. It's 60 seconds success with a bishop. Stay tuned. Welcome to 60 seconds success. Today, we look at what to do when you feel like giving up. You know, life is a season. A season where things go up, a season where things go down. Sometimes it could be the loss of a friend, the loss of a loved one, the loss of some relatives or something, maybe relationship or business or something. In any of these things, it gets to a point where you feel like giving up on life. But you see, successful people believe that giving up is not an option. When things get so bad and you feel like giving up, never forget that giving up wouldn't make it better. Giving up would not make it better. In that case, you should realize that any ordinary person can survive good times, but it takes extraordinary people to survive hard times. When you feel like giving up, realize that giving up is not an option. Something can come up anyway, anyhow. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so very much. Yeah, welcome back to the Helping Hand TV show. Um, we still have the fire in the studio. Um, my guest, Nana George Frimpong, an amazing achiever with extraordinary accomplishments. Um, here you are, Nana. You are losing your sight yes. and you are doing so much for yes. the community. Was, was it just, not affecting you? It was. I was running around the whole Kiko's town doing stories and people were wondering. This man who moves around in the night with a torchlight. <laughs> in the afternoon, I will manage mm -hmm. with a little vision. Mm. And then... Did you tell anybody what you were going to? Oh, yes. Uh, a lot of lecturers sympathized with me. Mm. Because I was then trying to write. Okay. Okay. So, if you see my script, it is like this. Oh, oh. Zing, zang, you know. Oh, oh. You start from line one before yeah. you finish the second sentence. It's You're on the line five. <laughs> it is shifted Good. this way. Yeah. So it was then that my lecturers noticed that mm. I was having problems. So, okay. That, 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 that should be some way. Um, yes. Like you said, almost like you signed your death sentence. Yes. So you were just waiting for the yes, for it to go. My goodness. So now my amazing um, thing is that um, whilst you were going through losing your sight, um, you had ATL and you transformed the place. Yes. Talk to me about that. Ah, uh, yes. I eventually was able to um, finish uh, my course, mm. but then the site was gone. My goodness. Yes. I, By the time you finished, it was gone? Yes, the, the time I finished it. Huh. So, um, as a visually impaired person, um, I was asked to do national service at ATLFM. So I was appointed as the first coordinator of the radio station. Mm. Mm. And as a visually impaired person, I, I knew everything about the um, advertisement world mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. about the marketing world as far as newspaper, print, and, uh, and electronic media okay. was concerned. Okay. So I waked up one day and I said, no, I must leave this radio station with an impact. Mm. So, with the support of my a few colleagues, um, mm. Mr. Joss Aqua, Mr. Asama was then the administrative, uh, call administrative officer. Okay. 
I told them, I am going to move this radio station from a 2 kilometer radio, radius radio station to a 20 kilometer radio station. Wow. Wow. Ask me, they asked me, how are you going to do it? Exactly. <laughs> and I saw people, don't worry. Just give me a bus and a few people who guide me when I get to Accra. Wow. We came to Accra, went around the advertising companies, and when we went back to Cape Coast, we had raised enough money to pay for the new... Um, um, the expansion? Yes, for the expansion. Wow. 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 So, Amazing. Amazing. The, now, in, your, in your story, um, there was a point that you had to travel to Cuba. Yes. At what point was that? Yes, um, that time I was in my second year. Okay. Had you lost your sight completely? It, it had almost virtually gone. Almost. Okay. So they told me I could only get it um, operated on mm. in Cuba. Okay. So one of my lecturers, he also bore the same name with me. His name was Mr. Frimpon. Okay. He was in the agri department. He brought me to Accra. We advertised in the mirror mm. that I needed help to go to Cuba for an eye surgery. Mm. Um, we did a lot. Uh, so we had some little help. Okay. Then we got to Cuba and had an eye surgery, but it was not successful. Oh. That's right. So um, you had to come back. Yes. I so the back. surgery was done. Yes. And I had lost one year of studies. My goodness. Yeah, because, My goodness. you know, around that time, because of our belief system, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, you, you get yourself confused. You mm -hmm. see, others oh, are blaming it on witchcraft, others mm. are on your mm. uh, uh, cases, ancestral cases. Mm. Uh, there was, uh, <laughs> Taboos, your mother went and crossed the river when she was having her menses. And <laughs> so many things. You know. Because and, you needed a solution. You needed yes. something. And I, they did not understand mm. why such a vibrant young man doing radio now, yeah. so popular in town, doing publishing, publishing the Goa Fisher Journal for the, for the town. And then suddenly they are holding your hand, moving you around. Nana, this is where I would pause and um, ask you an important question. I'm sure my audience and those in the studio, those all over the world, and they are waiting for me to ask this. Now, with this shift, you are sighted, now you've lost your sight. Yes. You used to be vibrant. Wouldn't it affect your vibrancy? Wouldn't it affect your um, ability to do things, help people? Um, but rather, it didn't, and it motivated you to do more. The question is, how come? Well, um, it's all because as an athlete, you know, you don't give up until you cross the line. My goodness. My goodness. So, my goodness. I've learned to persevere mm. as a footballer, as a hockey player, mm. as everything. It's always perseverance. So with a side gun, I decided that it should not be the end of the world My goodness. for fire. My no. Goodness. My there goodness. is more I could do My as a visually impaired person. Wonderful. There is more. There is more. Oh, yes. There is more. Yeah. Well, you are still with me, the voice of ability and for persons with disability. Um, I want to know what you think. Um, I have fire in the studio. Um, it's amazing. As an athlete, you don't stop until you cross the line. Um, as a business person, you don't stop until you succeed. So, 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 so. Um, right. Whatever thing you are doing, you don't stop until you succeed. I'll go for the feedback segment. I'll be right back. It's still the Helping Hand TV show. Stay tuned. Welcome to the feedback segment on the Helping Hand TV show. We appreciate your comments on our social media platforms. The phone calls and mails we receive from you. We also appreciate your concerns. We will do our best to address them. Feedback from Vivian, Pokwasi, Ghana. Your guest is amazing and I thank God for the things he has achieved. I pray for more strength and blessings for you, Bishop. God bless your show. 
You can send your comments or questions to our email, helpinghandshow at gmail.com. You can also send an SMS or WhatsApp message to plus 233-209-555-777. Or you can follow us on Facebook, The Helping Hand TV Show. One of the organizations on Mubua Helping Hand TV Show, um, AI Sorry Be a Friend of Wet Fire Generation Ministries. Um, Many almost leaders know Ekasai and Sayeba program also. Um, and they have good news for you. Um, they are willing to support. They are willing to support. Um, especially Akalano and like all the things you talked about. Um, Wet Fire Generation Ministries, almost um, Sumu, every now and then, whatever has to be done. There. H4P, we love to put smiles on the faces of persons with disability. At Far City Chapel, we love to make you smile. At H4P, we love to wipe the tears of persons with disability. At Far City Chapel, we love to give you experiences that will fill you with tears of joy. At H4P, we love to lend a helping hand to families of persons with disability. At Far City Chapel, we love to help families grow in the grace and love of God. At age 4 p we love to empower children and young people with disability. At Far City Chapel, we love to train children in the way they should go, so that when they grow, they will not depart from it. At age 4 p we love to give to persons with disability. At Far City Chapel, we love to give. Surely, some things are meant to be together. Fire City Chapel stands together with H4P organization. Together we stand. Fire City Chapel and H4P bringing dignity to disability. Yeah, welcome back to the Helping Hand TV show with me, the voice of ability and for persons with disability. I have um, Nana George from Paul, aka Fire, and he's putting a lot of fire in us, um, a lot of motivation, a lot of inspiration. He's a role model we are celebrating today. Um, amazing achievements. Um, fire, I'm yes. going to launch into something. Um, um, in, in Puntu, in Puntu Safo Hin. Safo Hin. Yes. Um, Development oriented sub chief. Amazing. That's you right. were given this honorary um, title. Um, I want us to begin to recount all the things that led to this. Um, why did the Cape Coast community yes. honor you with this title? Yes, um, because. Um, I had informed you I was already the publisher of the Ugua Fisher Journal. Yeah. And I was visually impaired. Mm. And I was still doing it. Mm. I had gone to ATL FM, um, seen to expansion, its expansion mm. from a two kilometer radius radio station. Mm. But whilst I was working there as the first coordinator of the station, mm. we got it expanded to a 20 kilometer yeah. radius yeah. radio station. Mm. Then, after completing school mm. um, I taught briefly at the um, Academy of Christ the King okay senior high school okay then I was I went to Cropon school for the blind briefly okay came back to to start the pilot inclusive education program I see in 2003 mm. so we started the first pilot um, inclusive school for wow. the visually impaired. Wow. Wow. So, whilst I was there, as a How many schools were involved in the pilot? There was only one then. Only one. Okay. Only one for the visually impaired. Okay. So, um, when I was there, there was, this, there was this blind teacher there, myself, <laughs> with a sighted woman, Mrs. <laughs> Nancy Kutunu. Okay. Who was then the head. But we were having the, our classes in the dining hall. Oh. And we're there with these deaf children. Okay. And when they come to the dining hall, they don't even seem to see that even we are having problems. So they'll be banging the <laughs> spoons and the pans and crying. Because crying. they don't hear. They don't they hear. Don't hear. <laughs> so I was very sad. <laughs> so I decided I must do something for myself and my visually impaired children. Wow. Wow. Or students or mm. peoples. Mm. So, 
I got some friends from the Netherlands. And then, with my little salary, I started putting together tie and dye clothes, wow. um, tie and dye dresses, wow. nice African batiks, mm. um, and some like what I'm wearing right now. Okay. So, we, all that I did was to send it through post mm -hmm. to Madame Sikama. In the Netherlands. And then in the Netherlands. Okay. And she will also do an open day. Okay. To raise funds. Mm. Mm. So within a very short period, with Madame Sikama and her friends at the Wassel Gansford College, they, they called them their committee, the Wassel Health Committee. Okay. They had raised um, almost 20,000 Ghana cities. Wow. Wow. So. so from the sales of the batiks, I was sending, sending to them. them. Wow. So, with that, I spoke to my headmaster then, that time, known as Elder Achinya. Mm. Uh, may God bless him. Mm. Very supportive headmaster. Wow. I told him, Elder, I've been able to raise some money. C can you give me part of the school land for me to put up a school block wow. for these children? He said, oh, well, well, we've been looking for that. Wow. 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 So, with the continuous export of this tie and dye and batiks to the Netherlands, to the Western Health Committee, and they bring it down money, we were able to put up a three classroom block unit. Um, the, we put in furniture. We had log every logistic that we needed for the place, computers, wow. everything. Wow. It was fully wow. fitted. Amazing. I told them, it was going to be very difficult for us to sustain uh -huh. this project uh -huh. because we need to buy bray sheets, uh -huh. we need to buy stylus, we need to do a lot of things. Mm. So I convinced them, they brought down some little money. Mm. And then we was, I, I bought a school bus mm. so that it could be used commercially to generate income. Wow. 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 To support, mm. To mm. support the program. Mm. So... At the same time, I was also living in town. Okay. And I lived close to a fort mm. known as Fort Victoria. Okay. It okay. was built in 1721. Okay. But for almost 100 years, nobody had been able to go up to the fort. Why? Because it was inaccessible. Oh. I waked up one morning. I was still visually impaired. Amazing. And I told... <laughs> I told my guide, Ujafu, and then Pedamu Fukosu, Homokosha, as well, fourteen. He was wondering how I could climb that. It was a very rocky area, mm. mountainous, mm. hilly. It is the highest point of Cape Coast. Wow. Full of bush and thorns. And this. Ah. I climbed up there, and then he later brought me back, carried me on his back. Wow. I said, Azi, eh, 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 <laughs> he thought I was joking. Mm. Then I went and spoke to uh, Central Region Development Commission, SEDICOM, okay. those days. Um, I'm talking about um, 1996, okay. 97, thereabouts. Mm. So, with some little support and with my mana, mega salary, and the rest. I got some prisoners together mm. and we constructed an eight, almost 800 meter stairway wow. to the place. Wow. 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 And then we opened up for Victoria for the first time to visitors. Wow. Wow. So tourists could now come there? Yes, tourists could now come there because at the top, when you are in the fort, it gives you a bird's eye view of the whole of the Cape Coast Township. Oh, it's like you are flying in a small airplane mm. and you are looking at mm. the Cape Coast Township. Mm. So at times when I started the advert for the place, we say, would you have to go to the Cape Coast Township? And it wow. caught up with them. Mm. I thought I was just sending a teaser. Mm. But people decided, well, they will climb up and see whether they are at the top of their roofs. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
it, 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 uh, uh, oh, they came in their numbers. What did you Oh, I'm still Mrs. Zuo. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you are still with me, the voice of ability and the professor's with disability. Um, I am with Faya in the studio. He's an amazing achiever with extraordinary accomplishments. I'll cross over to Elon for a spot of music and I'll come back with my very special guest. Stay tuned. I will worship you. Yeah, welcome back to the Helping Hand TV show. Um, thank you so much, Elom, for that amazing song. Um, I still have Nana George Frimpong. Um, and he's telling us how he came by the, the title Impuntu Nana Safohin. That's right. Impuntu Safohin. Safohin. That's right. And you deserve it. Yes. You deserve it. So, mm. as I was telling you, mm. the... In turn, number three Asafu Company. Okay. Um, they are known as the Brempon Asafu Company. Mm. Um, after the Intern Asafu Company had seen what I was doing and mm. I had done mm. at the place where Fort Victoria was mm. called Abum. Okay. Abum is part of Intern area. Mm. So they said uh, for opening up this land mm. to tourists, mm. we believe. Even if the government of Ghana we had asked him to do this, he couldn't have done it. Mm. Mm. So we are going to it, actually they wanted to make it in Koswahini. 
Okay. In Punto Hin. Mm. But in Cape Coast, we didn't have anything like in Punto Hin. Okay. So they had to bring it to the next tier. Okay. That is Safo Hin. Safo Hin. Which okay. is easy for them to install on okay. their own. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so the instant as Safo number three company of Cape Coast, mm. um, I was there one morning. Um, they brought a drum, <laughs> a drumstick, <laughs> and um, could be, you know, coconut. Mm -hmm. So um i was there one afternoon i was just sitting there and i heard them as a few songs and they were drumming and they could, oh be before i could say jack oh they had carried me <laughs> <laughs> on their shoulder oh you to him well watch me now you oh so people took the lead ran ahead and went and informed my mother <laughs> in the house that woman watching him <laughs> so my mother and uh some aunties of mine also quickly gathered themselves and asked, Why you know quiet? Also, yeah, you know, so any more sudo into one bra She'll be so proud, eh? And so <laughs> proud. So proud. Mm. and the interesting thing was that mm. whilst I was enjoying my kingly ride, <laughs> some women by the roadside started crying. Oh. Oh, these people are wicked, though. Mm. They are going to worry this blind man, though. Ah. Oh, I'm going to me as an eye. Really? Really? What can I say to it? Oh. They were crying. Whilst others were... Jay, <laughs> who, 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 <laughs> and, uh, others were crying. They are going to worry this blind man. So, this is where it could take us to another segment of mm -hmm. what we are discussing about. The discrimination. Stigma type. Exactly. Discrimination, negative, yeah. discriminatory yeah. attitudes. Yeah and stigmatization yeah. and ostracization yeah. of persons with disabilities. You think that once you have a disability, you yes. can't you be can't part perform. of certain things? Yeah. You can't yeah. perform. But here where these people, as of people, they are so proud of me. Definitely. They are taking me to their place. My goodness. And they were drumming and singing. Oh, and, and all the women, a lot of women from the community have joined in. Mm. They were all dancing mm. in front of me. Mm. Mm. So... I got there and they came and uh, I, they swore me into office. Wow. And As Nana yes. George. No. <laughs> <laughs> they swore me. <laughs> I was installed as mm. Nana Kobnenchi the first. Okay. Okay. Yes. okay. Um, they, I hardly use the Nana Kobnenchi. Mm. Uh, most often I'm using the Nana George Frimpong because okay. of the disability. Mm. Yeah. Well, that is it's amazing if we want to talk about your achievements i'm sure we'll spend yes. more than more than one week here right. you, you have you have done so much That's and right. we celebrate you right. we honor you, you you are the role models we need in this country um nana just before we wrap up yes. um you are the central regional president of the federation of disability organizations That's right. um few years ahead of us what does the future hold for fire oh i i actually apart from being the um, central regional president mm. of the federation mm. i was also the central regional president of the blind union wow the cape coast president of the blind union wow and then <laughs> a member of the mainstreaming disability subcommittee wow. of the cape coast metro assembly a member of the fund management committee mm. and so when I decided to contest for the second time mm. as the GFD regional president, uh, they said, no, 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 no. You have to drop all the posts. You can take only one. <laughs> so I had to relinquish most of these positions. Okay. To be re-elected only just this uh, 25th January 2020 oh, okay. um, as the um, GFD president for the central region. Wow. Congratulations. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um actually I, I i did it with a lot of pain because i love my visually impaired people mm. and uh you had to leave them yes i had to still yeah. i had to vacate that post yeah. so they're so nana one year new and i'm okay i'm not so yummy baba but but the interesting thing was that mm. the federation too was saying mm. that no nana no vote wow so I had to look at the bigger picture. Exactly. That um, I have done my master's in special education. Mm. So with a master's in special education, it means 
I, I am now versatile. Yeah. I know about all the disabilities. Yeah. And I could be of greater help mm. to those mental health persons, mm -hmm. to those with albinism, mm -hmm. to those with um, cerebral palsy. Mm. Because whilst working as the um, regional coordinator for inclusive education mm. and the president of the federation, mm. we started the first cerebral palsy center in Ghana, wow. in Cape Wow. At the Abu wow. wow. So I realized that. Um, I also introduced this slogan that I saw that our deaf persons were having problems. Mm. So I introduced this slogan, no sign language interpreter, no GFD meeting. Wow. So that we realized that there was a communication gap for mm -hmm. our deaf persons. Mm -hmm. Without, some of them went to hospitals, they came back with their ailments more serious mm. than they took there. Mm. They were sent to emergencies, and because of lack of communication, some of them died. My goodness. So, getting sign language interpreters also became my major vision and dream. Mm. That before I end my tenure, mm. there must be sign language interpreters. Though I've got one for Cape Coast, there was one in the Cape Coast Metro Assembly, mm. there's one in the Cape Coast Metro Hospital, mm. there's one in the Cape Coast Regional Hospital. Mm. We had encouraged the Cape Coast Regional Hospital to introduce some language course for their nurses there. Wow. We wow. still felt that after going around and advocating throughout all the um, districts in the region, mm. the MMDCs were ready to recruit the sign language interpreters. Mm. But where were they? Mm -hmm. They could not be found mm -hmm. anywhere. Mm -hmm. So, what do we do as a solution? Now, I had to come back. So, we got a place where we are currently putting in place to set up a sign language training center. Wow. Yes, in Cape Coast. Wow. <laughs> Amazing. Since I came on retirement mm. from the Ghana Education Service mm -hmm. as the regional coordinator for inclusive education as a deputy director of education okay um i i have managed to put up a small um guest house wow and um with the guest house is known as africa best rest house okay it's located right at the foot of fort victoria oh wow <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so so we're there, um, tourists who want to see Fort Victoria, mm. I had introduced stargazing in mm. the night. Wow. So if you want to wait in the night so that you can climb up and go and do stargazing, you have, you to, have to find a place to sleep. Exactly. So, <laughs> so automatically, we started chopping around them small, small. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then from there, mm. I realized that, oh, my people still needed help. Mm. So I set up a small foundation okay. known as Africa Best Foundation. Okay. But um, what we do is we are using the profits that we get from the Africa Best Rest House okay. to support the Africa Best Foundation. So it's strictly for only disabled persons. Wow. We are doing sponsorship for only disabled wow. persons. Wow. Amazing. Amazing. We, are, we are doing HIV care and support. Mm. We are doing educational sponsorship. Mm. Um, we are into planting for food and jobs. Wow. Rearing for food and jobs. Wow. As I'm speaking now, I have a rabbit tree, mm. um, which is the pilot project. Wow. And we are producing the breeder stock mm. so that um, when we get them in their large numbers. Mm. We can let our disabled persons uh, be trained in rabbit rearing. Nana, did you say you are doing all this in retirement? Yes. Wow. Uh, no. <laughs> 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 wow. And, and, and I must confess, at times I get so busy that the 24 hours seems to be not enough for me for the day. <laughs> Nana, your, your, your guest house, yes. you've employed some people. Yes. And you have employed disabled people? Yes, I have two disabled persons there. Amazing. I used to have one. Uh, there was a third one. He's mm. now 
um, old and has gone off. Mm. Uh, they used to call him Ko. Everybody probably known in town as Ko Dancer. Okay. But he was mentally okay. retarded and had recovered. Well, I thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. It's been amazing. I, I'm, I'm sure now the world watching us, you understand why I say he's an amazing achiever yeah. with extraordinary accomplishments. Thank you so much. Um, this is all time would allow us, but um, I have been inspired. Um, this is a man who is on retirement and he's doing all this. Um, I will not go on retirement yet. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'm going to jump straight into the freestyle segment. Um, the freestyle segment is a segment on the show where I allow my guests to do anything freestyle. They can sing, they can dance, they can um, recite a poem, they can play an instrument, they can do anything freestyle. Now, this is a man that wears many hats. This is a man of extraordinary achievements and accomplishments. I wonder what Faya will do for me freestyle. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, if it were to be our festival time, mm. um, I dance uh, the Asafu very well. Wow. But this, where we are, there's, there will be no Asafu tune for me uh. to do this. So, mm -hmm. as a church elder, okay. I belong to the Greece Church. Mm. I will do covenant keeping God. Wonderful. Because my God has always kept his covenant. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you can go ahead. It's okay. Covenant keeping God. There is no one like you. You are the Alpha and the Omega. There is no one like you. God of fire, there is no one like you. God of Abraham, there is no one like you. Covenant keeping God, there is no one like you. You are the Alpha and Omega. There is no one like you. Amazing. 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 Thank you so very much. I'm going to move straight into the game segment. Um, the game segment is where my audience um, broaden their smiles. They become happy. Um, at the beginning of the show, we gave numbers um, to every member of the audience. Um, my guest, Faya, is going to make somebody happy. Um, he will shuffle some balls and pick a lucky number. Um, the member of the audience with that lucky number goes home with a free gift from DV Unlimited Company Limited. What? So if you are ready, let the games begin. Okay, so Faya, this is the ball. Um, just shuffle it a bit and then pick one um, ball. Um, so let's shuffle again. Exactly. Exactly. Great, great, great. Now we can pick just one. Just I've seen one. the one of Hello. <laughs> Hello, you, you, the one who sang. You want yes. for Hello, man? Yes, I want to read something for Hello. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the lucky number for today is twenty-five. Who has twenty-five? Oh wow! Unfortunately, it was not Hello. It was not Hello. Unfortunately. <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> so congratulations, congratulations, congratulations. Congratulations. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. They, they, I know that the smiles are going down, the clouds are going down. But on the Helping Hand TV show, we are all winners because every one of you, you are going to go home with a free gift from H4P organization. Thank you so much. Well, special thanks to my very, very special guest, Nana George Frimpong, a.k.a. Fire. Fire. <laughs> the man is an accomplished man. Um, if you want to talk about all his achievements, trust me, we are not going yet. Um, thank you so much for coming all the way to be with me in the studios, Nana. That's I'm right. so grateful. Right. Um, thank you to DV Unlimited Company Limited yes. and Fire City Chapel. They have been my proud, proud sponsors. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, members of the audience have been um, members from Fire City Chapel, and you have been amazing. You have been amazing. 
Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And um, I want to say a very, very special thank you to my crew. They have made this possible. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And thank you to you um, for tuning in to your most favorite program on air, um, the Helping Hand TV show with me, the voice of ability on air for persons with disability. Um, I'm going to come your way again next week. But until then, remember, disability is not inability. Thank you and God bless you.